This is Glenn Zuckman in the SIGGRAPH 2011 Art Gallery here with Sue Golifer, who has been with SIGGRAPH forever. To be honest, I just know I've seen you at so many different SIGGRAPHs because you're the pink hair lady, but you've also been Art Gallery Chair. And how long and what have you been doing with, with SIGGRAPH and, and art? Yeah, I've been involved in, in, in SIGGRAPH Art Gallery since the end of the like, 90s, actually. And I worked my, my way up from a very voluntary position to actually being the chair. I'm still voluntary, but it actually more significant position. And I've also um, worked on the, uh, usually on uh, on-site committees where I help them hang the work or, you know, put the work up in, in situ. And I'm also on the review committees for reviewing the artwork. So about 13 or so SIGGRAPH Yeah, art something like that. Something and, like that. And have they changed in 13 years? Yes. <laughs> what were people doing 13 years ago? And I mean, it's all over the map to be sure, but how would you characterize it then and now? Oh, I, I think, I mean, it's obviously so dependent upon upon the chair, because it, in the way each year it's the chair's kind of vision. Has a different focus. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, obviously different people have different specialisms and different things that they want to in, in, put into the art gallery. I think there was a lot more traditional 2D work in some of the galleries. I know it's certainly in mine. And also, it's, unfortunately, it's independent upon the budget and, and how the Seagraph the year before <laughs> Um, went and whether the you know how much the art gallery has actually been allowed for putting on you know it's how complicated much it. work can <laughs> exactly get here? exactly. So, so tell me about your year. What was your focus? Well, my year was called synesthesia. So I'm thinking particularly on, of, of the senses and how um, digital technology actually covers that. Um, so I had a kind of a, a, like I had sound and um, I remember your year. Actually. Yeah, I really liked the synesthesia. Yeah, so. and, and I was very lucky because I had animation in there as well. And I know a lot of people so there were art papers and discussions and things like that and art talks so I sort of did a mini conference with, with in in the art gallery itself really you know well, what's so kind of uh, crazy amazing wonderful exciting about the digital realm is that you know in the in the physical world we have some small percentage of humans are, are synesthetes but in a sense digital media lets sort of everyone be a synesthete or lets us have all kinds of synesthetic experiences. Absolutely, and I, and I, and it was one of those ones. I was just really desperately thinking of a of a title for it, and I asked my son, as you do, and on a Sunday afternoon, and went, oh, I don't know, and he said synesthesia, and, and I just, yeah, that's exactly right, you know. And he's not an artist himself, but anyway, it just, and I, I just like, and that totally gave me a focus about what it was about and what I could, what I was going to choose, you know. I mean. I'm not saying every single piece was actually about synesthesia, but that was the main focus behind it, I think, you know. Well, I, I mean, it, I, in the digital realm, I just love the idea of taking things in one space. I think you had one piece where someone had a, an ASCII printer and it was talking to speakers, and so we were hearing these ASCII tones kind of dragged out. And, <laughs> yeah, um, it was very low tech. I didn't have a big budget, you know, <laughs> which I, I actually quite like. I sort of come from a, you know, a printmaking background myself in fine art where you kind of make do, really. You know? So, I mean, there weren't incredible installations or something. And, and it was long before sort of, you know, social media and Twitter. And, uh, you know, I see all these live feeds that are going around, you know, and yes. this, is, this is what's happening now. It's something my, my students, because I, I actually, I actually run a, a master's in digital media arts and it's very important that I, you know, even if it's not my own personal practice, that, you know, I know what's out there that's buzzy, you know? So, you know, SIGGRAPH is, is pretty extraordinary in the way that it does combine art and science and, and they feel like such a natural fit to me, but if you think about the events out there, there's a lot of science stuff and there's a lot of art stuff, but there aren't that many places that they enter interact the way they do at SIGGRAPH, are they? No, well, I mean, again, in one of my many lives, I'm the director of ISEA International, and ISEA, which used to be the Inter-Society in Electronic Art, um, has a symposium every year called ISEA Symposiums, and we're just about to have ISEA Symposium, um, I can't remember which number it is now, um, in Istanbul <laughs> um, in September, and that actually, uh, that is, crosses over between the arts and sciences, and then obviously the Leonardo that's publishing the publication here for the art gallery. Um, um, I think there has always been that link. Um, I just think we, we, we had, was a quite an interesting birds of a feather with Leonardo today, and we were talking about a lot of it's to do with jargon, you know, the way that we speak as artists versus the way that computer scientists may speak, or, you know, it, it, we, we feel as though we're apart, but in fact, I think we're talking quite a lot of the same kind of things, you know. Well, I think, I think and obviously we have a lot of artists and scientists, but I yeah. think it, the artists and the scientists are both two sort of 
job descriptions that include asking questions. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and I mean, I, you know, I was a 60s artist and I, I saw myself as a... It was long before um, research into art got sexy or the university took it on as some extra funding <laughs> scheme, you know. I always thought of myself as a, as a pure mathematician rather than an artist, which I was oh, an artist. Really? Yes, I don't know. That's one does. But I say the idea, I think, is another forum which is very similar to, to, to SIGGRAPH and there are galleries, um, art galleries and, uh, you know, electronic theatre and, and performance. And I mean, I think, you know, it's not just necessarily, you know, um, we call them white cubes. Um, yes. <laughs> it's over and beyond that, you know. I don't know, you could go to an Isaiah and you can find a thing about pigeons going up in the sky and you probably the pigeons fly away and it never happens. But, you know, so it can be really quite ephemeral. <laughs> as well as you know things that, that hang on walls and things that are projected and then the projections are actually on the streets now aren't they you know changing cities and environments just by projections so so where are we headed in, in the 21st century god only knows <laughs> where is art headed where is it heading in all sorts of crossover and everything really i think you know and, and once upon a time i think digital art was kind of you know uh, I don't know, people didn't understand it, but I think, you know, any exhibition that, you know, be it the Tate Modern, you know, they've, they've actually made the captions using a computer. So, yes. so, you know, and they use projections all the time without even thinking about it, you know. I think, I think it would be awful if we badged ourselves and got ourselves into a kind of silo or a ghetto. I think, I think we're out there and I think it's just going to be, nobody's going to have that distinction, really. Sue Golliver, thanks for visiting Strange Angels. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay.